Well, today I'm going to share with you a story, and uh, I'm going to welcome to the platform uh, a wonderful man of God. Come on, guys. Uh, this, uh, this gentleman has become a great friend of mine, an encourager, a mentor, and uh, he's a big part of our church uh, in so many ways. Uh, he's also uh, the spiritual father of Pastor Josh Blackman. Would you give a warm, over-the-top welcome to Pastor Dale C. Come on, everybody. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, Quarryville. Come on, Center County. All of our streams join us today uh, for this part of the message. And uh, my brother, there you go, elbow, that's good. Well, thanks for so much for being here today and uh, sharing uh, your story. And uh, let's get into it. Uh, you came to know Jesus. Your testimony is what? Uh, I was a very rebellious uh, Little teenager. Little Yep, you got it. Can you hear me? Yep. A uh, very rebellious teenager in my early years and uh, went to uh, youth camp one year. Anybody go to youth camp? Y'all do that around here? Yep. Uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. And I remember the evangelist saying, are you, are you tired of every year doing this and then going home and letting it go? And I said, you know what? This is the year. I was in high school, turned my life over to God. Uh, everybody knew I got saved. I was such an angry, hateful young man, and everybody knew that I got saved when I got saved. My, my sister used to call me Delzebub. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it fit. And uh, I, I never forget, I ran next door to my friends. I said, hey, man, Terry, I got saved. He said, wait, don't, don't be radical. I said, it's too late. <laughs> too late. God did something in my life. And, and so I went to Bible college, uh, you know, I graduated, went to Bible college and uh, started preaching right away. And uh, I go every weekend, drive away every weekend and, and preach. And then I uh, went to, uh, became a youth and music uh, director for about three years. And then when I was 24. All great worship leaders are bald, by the way. That's what I'm Isn't talking about. True? Well, well, but I had, hair, I had hair and everything. Uh, you got to use your imagination. And uh, had chops, you know, 70s. And uh, so anyway, <laughs> I just dated <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Uh, so, so anyway, when I was 24, uh, I became a pastor at Gary, Oklahoma. Does everybody know where that's at? And, uh, <laughs> Oklahoma is in the United States. <laughs> that's about as much as I know. Boomer, yeah. Boomer Sooner. Uh, anyway, I was, uh, uh, became a young pastor. 24. I remember I was 23, and I marked it off my resume and put 24 because I just turned 24. My twins were born on the 27th. They voted me on the 28th of August. I remember that. And uh, anyway, uh, God did great things and uh, moved in great ways. And I, uh, and I went from there to Oklahoma City and began to uh, work with TBN and uh, love working on television and uh, stuff. When uh, and everything was going good, and then my marriage fell apart. And uh, uh, went through a divorce, uh, came up here actually, and then uh, went through a divorce. I've been up here since 1986. I still sound like this. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and so anyway, uh, I uh, came up here and, uh, uh, like I said, went through a divorce. Everybody would call me and tell me, and said, you know what? Yeah, you know, the, the men, mainly ministers, stuff like that, you know, and, and religious people would call, you know, say, you know, Dale, you can't ever pastor again now. You know, you don't, don't you know, you can't pastor, you can't preach, you know. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I, I don't know. And then I met, I met this beautiful Italian lady right here, my wife, my awesome lady. And uh, uh, we, we dated for a couple years and got married. And, now, and now hold that for a second. Did I, did I jump second, ahead? Because... Uh, just real quick, you came to a point where you had nothing. You were living in, or you were in a one room that you were renting. Yeah. You had a carpet, no yeah. furniture. Right. Slept on the carpet. You slept on the carpet. I was thankful. You were broken, broken. but God was and healing nothing. you. And that's when you met Nancy, and she was so impressed by all my carpet. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and all three hairs that were left by yeah. the time I met her. Yeah, I, I brought her to my apartment. I said, hey, you want to see my apartment? I, yeah. She said, oh, nice carpet. <laughs> that was it. So, and so, so anyway, out of that, you became, you started your own business. I did. I did. I, well, I, I was working so many hours, I couldn't see my children. And so I started a carpet business. Uh, <laughs> ironic. 
It is amazing. You've cleaned my carpets, man. Thank you. you. I'm You're a good man. You, did I ever get that spot up? I don't know, Michelle. Is it still there? <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, I started a carpet business. And, you know, I began to complain to God. I said, God, you know, you call me to preach. You call me to pastor. And here, you know, here I am, you know, cleaning carpets and installing carpets and stretching carpets. And, you know, what good is that? And, and, and then I began to notice, you know, that, that I was in people's homes. And I began to talk to them about Jesus because I'm a soul winner, whether I'm in church or what. And, and I began to, I, I knelt on wet carpets and began to pray with people to receive the Lord into their life. Come on, isn't that good? Come on, isn't that good? And I, I, said, I said, you know what? I, I, it took me a while. I'm from Arkansas. So it took me a while to figure that out. You know, that God was going to use me wherever I'm at. Whatever I was going through, God was gonna. God was gonna use me, and then uh, as we, do you want me to go on? Do you want to ask questions? No, no. Keep, so <laughs> was, let's get to the part of, you know, people start coming to the house, and you start yep, the church. Yep. I uh, uh, we uh, uh, I told Nancy we we bought a house in Wayne, and and I told Nancy we got to do something. I said let's start a Bible study. Let's get two people. Let's just get two people. How, how many would love to have just two people that just love the Lord and just meet with you? And and I said let's do that. So over over a year. We just, we, uh, we met with these two people, Ralph and Mimi were their name. Big, tall guy, little bitty lady. And, uh, and we met with him and just, just stayed at work. And, and then this guy came and he said, can I get saved? And I said, well, sure. And, and we prayed with him. He received the Lord. Uh, next week, he brought his daughter back. She received the Lord. She brought her friends. They received the Lord. They brought their friends. And pretty soon, we had a whole house full of people. And, and then I was preaching. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and uh, then I was, I was we was having Bible study, and we were in the book of Nehemiah, and the Lord touched my heart to, to I said, I believe God wants us to start another church so, and rebuild the walls. So you started a church, then for the next 10 years, so let me get to this next 14. part in a moment. For the next 10 years, they pastored a church. Josh and Corinne walked into that church one day broken. Uh, God gave my word of knowledge about someone here, your marriage is jacked up, and it was them. And that started a relationship where they, you know, came back to the Lord. God restored them. You continue. You guys served together. He was yep. a worship leader for Eight you. Years. You trained him in preparation uh, for what he's doing now. Yeah. And uh, we honor you for that. And things were going really good, but there are some other challenges. Yeah, I had, uh, I had teenage children. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they got off, uh, they got started meddling on drugs, got off on the drugs, and uh, one of my sons uh, left me for two years, didn't talk to me, uh, but they, they got to be heavy hitters, got into heroin, and uh, 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 really, really bad stuff. And uh, I used to lay in their bed, anoint their bed with oil, and I would, I would pray over that and just... Uh, ask them to ask God to touch them, and and God said, "I'm going to give them to you," and He did. He He sent them to Teen Challenge. And when I got their letter, because they they were allowed to call, when I got their letter, I grabbed the letter and I started running around my house. I said, "The devil's a liar! My boys are saved! My yeah. boys are saved!" And I'm Come running on. around the house. Testify. <laughs> Good. <laughs> One of, them, one of them went through a, a years later, uh, one of them went through a, a bad car accident and uh, crossed his meds, and I got, I got a phone call that uh, he had aspirated, and uh, my son died. And uh, so Nancy and I, we got on the plane, we go to Fort Lauderdale, and uh, get off the plane, and I got a text that his twin brother was dead also later that day. <clears throat> and uh, I didn't know what to do. I mean, you, I mean, you can write all the books in the world, but you don't know what, you do, what to do when your children die. I took my family by the hands. I said, I don't know what to do, but I know how to worship the Lord. And I begin to sing, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me, unto my family. God promised them to me. He saved them. They're in heaven with the Lord. 
He promised them to me and he gave them, he gave them to me. And I tell you what, I, I, people ask me, so what did you do? I said, I don't know, but the next morning, I did what I do every morning. I got my Bible and I got on my knees. And I said, Lord, I don't know where to go from here. I'm in uncharted territory. I've never been in this kind of pain before. And I turned to Psalms because David lost four children. He knew how I felt. And David has a beautiful song. He, he said, I waited patiently on the Lord. And God turned to me. And he heard my prayer. He heard my cry. And he lifted me up out of the muck and the mire. And he placed my feet on a firm foundation. And he said, and he put a new song in my heart. And he said, many will know. Many will hear and know. And I, I stood on that verse and Sam, I, I know we're out of time. Sam, he said, he didn't say they clean the muck and the mire off. But when people look at that and what you've been through, God will use you. God will say, what's that stuff? Why is you in the muck and the mire? I said, because God saved me and God did a work in my life. Amen. So I wanted him to share that, not so that everybody would, that's watching online or in the house would say, okay, I have nothing to complain about now. He had so much. That, that's not at all the reason. See, the reason that, that I want to, he's, he's a great friend. He's been an encouragement to me, even coming out of one of the dark, darkest seasons of his life and so many. I wanted him to share that to encourage you, to let you know that whatever you're going through is big to you. It may not be what someone else is going through, but it's big to you and it's big to God and it's important to him. And the way that you're going to keep testifying is that when you declare, you know what, no matter how I feel, I'm going to worship. No matter how I feel, I'm going to stay close to Jesus. And as I do that, man, there's a story that God is writing. It's painful, it's difficult, it's challenging, but it's God's story. And just give some closing thoughts on that. Hey, Amen. I, I just want to tell you that I, I, when I think about this, I always think of Moses with that stick in his hand. And God said, what do you have, Moses? What's in your hand? He said, I got a stick. And he said, with that stick, God delivered the people of Israel that whatever you have in your hand, God has it and can deliver and set free yeah. people within your life. That's he can right. open up the Red Sea. He can bring you into the promise. With, with that stick, he can water a nation with that stick. And whatever you have in your hand today, whatever you've been through, God has given you the card. He's given you, he's, I call it the ministry of going through. That we've gone through that and it's our obligation to reach back and to bring people through with whatever God has given us, whatever we've gone through, whatever gifts, whatever talents. Don't focus on the negative. Focus on the positive. Focus on what God has given you. What I can do through Christ's strength. Yeah, come on. Come on.